Problem solving strategy number two, try something. So here's what it says, put pencil to paper, just, just mess around. You can see that there, like, what does that even mean? Well, you, in the directions here, play around, mess around, play around, do whatever. Don't, don't get to this point where you just say, I, I can't do anything. I, I don't know what to do. Um, many times with a, with a good problem, uh, you're not supposed to know what to do. So that's completely natural. Uh, sometimes students, though, will give up. If you're going to be a future educator, or you are a future educator, you're going to be an educator, you'll find that many of the students in your class might also want to just say, I don't know what to do. What do I do? And then whatever you do, don't just tell them what to do. Then it's no longer problem solving. Then it becomes an exercise. Or you say, let me do one just like it for you. And you you take all of the joy out of actually solving the problem. So solving a problem is, is, is messy business. So trying something. Well, if we look at the problem, it says last week, Alex borrowed money from several of his friends. He finally got paid at work. So he brought cash to school to pay back his debts. First, he saw Brianna and he gave her one fourth of the money he had brought to school. Then Alex saw Chris and gave him one third of what he had left after paying Brianna. Finally, Alex saw David and gave him one half of what he had remaining. Who got the most money from Alex? Now, what you might notice when you're trying to mess around or play around is that you might have to read and then you might have to reread and then you might have to reread the reread and so on until you fully understand the problem. Now, when I say understand, I mean understand the story itself. So here I think the story is that, that Alex owes money to his friends, and now he has money. He's got to pay back three different friends, and he keeps giving a part of his money back to his friends. Um, I don't notice anywhere that there's even money mentioned, and so it's a little confusing, and I might think, well, how would I know? I don't, I don't have that. I also notice that there's fractions in this problem. And so if I'm going to try something, I might think like, well, let's see, one fourth versus one third versus one half. This ought to be pretty straightforward. But then I noticed this, what he had left after paying or what he had remaining. And that seems kind of tricky. So maybe I just, maybe I just mess around a little bit. Maybe I draw a picture. Maybe I just try numbers. And I'm going to do just a few of those for you. Um, let's just try, let's just try picking some numbers and seeing what happens. So let's say that, I don't know, maybe Alex, <clears throat> he owed a lot of money. Maybe he owed $500 uh, or he brought $500 at least. He got paid at work anyway. And so I'm thinking maybe his paycheck is $500. I don't know. And so he saw uh, Brianna. I'm just going to walk through the story um, in order, right? So the first part is he, he saw Brianna and gave her one fourth of the money that he brought to school. Well, one fourth of $500 is basically like just dividing that by four. So I might take 500 dollars and divide it by four equal pieces and grab a calculator or do it in my head. That's $125. All right. Then Alex saw Chris and gave him one third of what he had left. Oh, okay. So what did he have left after paying Brianna? All right. So this was like this first line was what he did with Brianna as far as paying her back. But now since he's given her $125, what does he have left? Well, he has 500 minus 125, he only has $375 left. So now when he gets to um, Chris, he has to give Chris, and it says one third of what he had left. So I have, to, I have to do a third. This was the fourth here. Now I'm going to do the third, which is dividing by three. I might take 375 and divide it by three. Let's see what happens. Now, now this time, I think I am going to use a calculator. So let's try that. 375 divided by three is $125. Now, I already noticed that's strange. That's not what I expected. Hmm. Brianna got 125. Chris also got 125. I don't know. Either I maybe I messed up or there's some trick trickery going on with this problem. And when I'm really problem solving, I don't know. So then I might just continue through it. Like this strategy is helping me think about something because now he gives, um, finally, he gives half of what he had left to, what does it say? I kind of scooted it over too much to uh, David, right? Okay. So. Um, let's see what, uh, what that would be. I want to make sure this is David. Yeah. Alex saw David gave him one half of what he had remaining. So let's figure out what he has left first. Well, now instead of having 375, he paid another 125 to Chris and now he only has 250. So he gives half of that 
to David. Well, if I half is basically just dividing by two, 250 divided by two is $125 again. So it looks like that they all got the same amount of money. Now, I could stop here and say, like, I think they got all the same amount of money, but maybe it's just because I chose $500. Remember, I made up that $500. I was just messing around and playing around. I don't know if it was $500. If I wanted to know more about this problem, I might try repeating this problem, but maybe use $1,000 or $2,000, something that might give me more clues. And if this is happening every time, then I might say to myself, hmm, I need to discover more of what's going on. Now, if you were going to draw a picture, a picture could work, but it might be a little tricky. Uh, let's see why. So let's say that, that, that this, I'm going to draw this, this big rectangle right here. It represents, you know, $500. I'm just going to use $500 um, as my number, or it could be the thousand. Now, when he saw, when he saw the first person, and I've already forgotten the first person's name, let's see, Brianna, okay, he gave a fourth of it away. Well, I'd have to cut that into four equal pieces, which I can kind of do, right? And give one fourth of that to Brianna. Right, that's, that's $125 right there. Now, what's left? Well, what's left is all of this stuff over here that I'm shading into the orange. And now he goes to Chris and he gives them one third. Well, if you notice, it's already cut into three equal pieces, right? This is what, he, um, is what Alex has left. And so one third of that would just be one of those three chunks. So this one would go to Chris right here, right? Chris would also get an equal size chunk of $125. And then what would be left now um, is I'll just double shade it, just these two rectangles to the right. And let's see, um, now he goes on to David. This is all that he has left here and he gives him half. Well, there's two squares. So half is one out of those two. So this one goes to David. Now, when I drew this picture, hopefully what you can see is that not only does it give me an idea about the fractions, it gives me an idea that the number might not matter as much. And all I got all of this just from messing around.